Well, we're back, guys. I'm Rami Gabriel. This is Kamado Mike. Kamado Mike is my real name. All right. So we have a picanha that we're going to cook on the jotisserie. Yeah, that's why we're here. Today, we're going to talk about cooking on the jotisserie. <laughs> Tisserie with a Z. Mm. That's amazing. <laughs> that is so good. So before we do, we're going to get the picanha. Absolutely. Oh, that's a hunk of meat right there. I'm also going to season it with some pepper, fresh ground pepper. Pep, pep. If there are any steps that you guys want to see in the videos, please let me know in the comments. I had some friends reach out to me, say they want to know how I season. So I'm including that here. Next, I'm going to use coarse salt. And again, with the coarse salt, it helps you see how much you're putting down so you don't over salt. If you use normal table salt, since it's cut so fine, it dissolves really quick and you're, you're not able to visualize how much salt you're putting. And you put a ton of salt when the meat is so thick. Because of the thickness of the meat, yeah. That's what she said. And then we're going to do some garlic. Can't have too much garlic. That's not what she said. And you put so much garlic because of the thickness of the meat again? No, I just love garlic. Okay. I was going to, that's what she said to you, but. And then I'm also going to flip it over and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to score it, score the fat. garlic powder. There you go. Remember, we're going to season both sides here. That's how I used to uh, cut my mangoes. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to salt. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to flip this bad boy over again. We're going to cut it into slices that we're going to fold and put on this bit. So, Come on, Rami, can you please explain why we are cutting it? in this direction as opposed to long ways. So we're gonna cut it against the grain. You can see the grain runs this way here. So we're gonna go against the grain. That way when we fold it and slice it at the end, we'll also be getting the tender cuts, right? So it, it comes down to also cutting it on the spit after it's done? Right. Because what would happen if we cut it long ways? Then when you cut the final cut off the spit, it'll be a lot more chewy. And not as be soft because you're cutting with the grain. This this is why Kamado Rami is full of knowledge and we want his expertise. You guys can't see me, I guess I would get lower. I never really ever had to get lower, so this is kind of a new thing for me, but um, yeah. And now we're gonna cut. So I like to cut it in pieces big enough because I'm remembering that I'm gonna fold it over when I put it on the spit. So I'm going to make a cut like this, cut like this, and then one more right here. That way we have pieces that we're able to roll up and put on this bit here. So you seasoned it and then you cut it, but now we have some exposed sides. Yeah. Would you see re season the inside? Maybe? That's a great idea. Let's That's go ahead and do that. Sure. That here we go. Got some uh, seasonings here. No waste here, guys. No waste here. That's right. Now what we'll do, we're gonna fold them just like this. This like kind of reminds me of like, cause it's so short. It reminds me of like when I'm trying to cross my legs cause my legs are so short. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's trying to fold it on each other just like that. You know what I mean? Not really. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Slide it down. And 
I'd like to get it through the fat so I can center it here. Okay. Beautiful. So again, this is what I was trying to visualize when I was making the slices. You want to have the slices the right size so you're able to get this done quote unquote easily. All right. Look at that. And there you have it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get the Kamado Joe ready for the Joe Tizzeri attachment. So you fold down this side, put this here. So once you close it, it's not going to close all the way, but it'll hold itself down. You want to have the Joe Tizzeri centered there. Make sure this is stable. And then like Mike said, the spit goes into this end. Oh, Kamado Mike, excuse me. Let's go ahead and get the spit and get it on here. And the thickest one. Making sure not to hit the spit. Like that. You want to get it in deep enough so it doesn't hit anything when it's rotating on the grill. And then I'm going to put these on here. I'm going to put them on loosely. That once I'm at the grill, I can make fine adjustments because we want to make sure they're centered on the grill. All right, so now we're going to add the spit to the jotisserie. It helps to lift this up a little bit so you can put it in that square. Slide it in, slide it down, and then the other end goes here, and it rests just like that. And you can see we have it pretty much perfectly centered. I'm going to put the heat deflector on this side, so we have indirect heat and we have direct heat, so that as it rotates, we make sure we get a nice even cook. And then once we have it centered, now we can lock these in here. We're going to keep the grill around 300 degrees, and we're going to pull this off once it gets to about 130 degrees. So if you want to get closer here, we have our heat deflector, we've got Kamado mic, and then we've got our Picanha on the spit, where we have the divider on the bottom, the hot charcoal, and then we're going to leave this until we get an internal temperature of about 130 degrees. We'll be back. One more thing. So I set this to about 80% open where the notch is 100, and then I have this set to about one, one finger just to keep the temperature around 300 degrees. You want to make sure to keep temperature consistent so you don't burn the picanha, but we just get that nice crust going. So we lost a little bit of heat while we had it open, but we're going to get this to right around 300 to 350 and it's going to stay there. So as you can see here, we're locked right at 300 degrees. Going to keep the lid closed and we're going to monitor it from the meter probe and we'll get an alert about five minutes before it's done and we'll be back. So now during this last five minutes, I've opened the grill, took out the heat deflector. So we're going to get a nice final sear on the outside here. It's time to take it off. We're going to let it rest. All right. Oh, did you look at that? That looks unbelievable. All right, let's see what we got here. <coughs> I'm, I'm salivating like a dog. Oh, yeah. In Arabic, we say, kelb. Like I'm, I'm salivating like a kelb. You guys want to jump in there? Reminds me of my days at Golden Corral. Mike, what's wrong with you? I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm not good at like describing it like all those people. On you got to describe it. You are on yeah, TV. It's juicy and it's flavorful. It was the crust, so I got a little bit of that crunch. Yeah. These are good. Let's get a little internal Cafe? piece here. Yeah. I don't know how to do this in a pandemic, so I just go over. Bring it to your mouth. There you go. Let's put this on. Mmm. So that's more on the medium rare side? This is medium rare. Oh, nice. 
Mm. Mm. So picanha is a tricky meat to cook, but between the meter plus and the jotisserie, mm -hmm. it makes it really easy, really consistent. Can I ask a question though? Of course. Sure, let's, say, <laughs> let's say I don't want it as rare. What, what would your recommendation be? Uh, go somewhere else. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, you could leave it longer. I pulled it off because I set the meter to a medium rare temperature, <coughs> but you can set it to whatever temperature you'd like. At the Brazilian steakhouses, they they cut off a layer like that and then they throw it back on the spit so that that layer can now be crusted. Yeah. So everyone gets to enjoy the crust. I love yeah. the crust. But crust to me is the best part. That's amazing. <laughs> that is so good. If this looks good, like, comment, subscribe. Oh my god. At the bottom. And click on the Amazon link. Wow. I'm telling you, the. the <laughs>